Welcome to Be Latina's virtual pop-up shop, where we talk to an extraordinary business owner in the Latinx community about their business, their aspirations, and their inspirations. Today, I'm joined by the creator of Be Latina. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thank you so much for having me. My name is Shamara Garcia, and I am originally from Danbury, Connecticut, but I currently live in Miami, Florida, so that's where I'm joining you from. <laughs> awesome, all the way from here. Warmer over there than what I'm experiencing here in New York. It's cold right now, but it's okay. <laughs> I won't brag. <laughs> awesome. And what's the name of your business? Yes. Yeah, so um, originally, when I started, it was Be Latino with the Good Hair, but everyone got so confused because they thought I was selling hair, but really, no. Um, so we go by Shop Be Latina. Wonderful. And what does Shop Be Latina do? Right, so um, so we sell products and apparel that make a statement before you do, and we let our clothes do the talking. Awesome, and so what is one of the things that the clothes do the talking for? Yeah, so one of the messages that I have on right now, Latina has no skin tone, which is our number one seller. And then our other number one seller is being born to an immigrant. Um, so we talk a lot about colorism, um, being proud about where we're from, because as most people know, people from other countries, they're so proud of their country and their culture is just like deep in them that you you see it you when you speak to someone from a different country you feel the proudness or the pride right so we talk a lot about that as those two messages are really um ingrained in me and I feel like um growing up it was those two things that made me me you know so can you tell us a little bit more about what those two things were and, you know, why it's so ingrained into you? Yes, absolutely. So Latina has no skin tone. Um, it just simply means that not all Latinas look the same. So growing up, I've always gotten questioned about my hair. I've gotten questioned about my last name being Garcia. And so people didn't believe me, you know, when I would say, yeah, my dad's from Belize, my mom's Puerto Rican you know, they automatically assume African-American, Black, you know, you can't be Hispanic. You can't have Latin roots. And so, and actually the other day I had, I had, I hired a cleaning service and he was, he walked in, he's like, oh, I thought you were Hispanic. And I said, why do you think I'm not? <laughs> and he, he just like stopped and he's Haitian. So I'm like, Dude, you share the same island as Dominican Republic. Like you see that we come in all different shades. Why yeah. would you say something like that to me? And he he went off of my name on paper, but he saw me and he could not understand why. So that's what Latina has no skin tone. Um, that's what it means. Um, however, when I put the message out there, I saw it from just my side being dark skin, curly hair and Spanish last name. But then I started to learn from other Latinas that they have their side of the story too. And like white Latinas, you know, they get questioned too. And I'm just like, you do? <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, this message is bigger than just me. Um, so I feel like all my life I had to fight, you know, fight for who I am and, you know, people not believing me. And then the other side of being born to an immigrant, you know, was my dad being from Belize, Central America. He, you know, he instilled in us, you know, pride, hard work, which I think most immigrants, that's, that's their main focus is coming to America, doing things uh, as best as they can for their families, especially from back, you know, back at home and in, you know, in the States. And then um, him sharing stories, like he was a storyteller, like, and he didn't mean to, that's just what he did, you know? Um, and so sharing so many stories and I started to really embrace those stories as I got older. And I'm like, man, this is really interesting. Like you should write a book. And then, you know, just, I'm so, you know, exposed to all different types of cultures that I'm like, everyone is just so proud about being from Cuba, being from DR, Venezuela, wherever they're from. And I'm like, man, we have such great pride instilled in us. So being born to an immigrant is just a way to say thank you and allow people to feel good about where they come from, especially in the times that we're living in right now. So I actually came out with that message before Donald Trump came into office. And when he came into office and then he started this whole like the, the camps and the ISIS and I mean not ISIS, ICE, um, and I'm just like, I, I, it, it was just like good timing. Yeah. yeah, it's also like introducing 
not necessarily a new narrative, but um, the the like positioning yourself as the owner of these narratives, right? And like taking back ownership of the phrases or things that have been said um, right. to you, to us, to our communities, to our families. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's I think that's great, and I, I love you. that those are the two most popular items in your yeah. store. That's super. Thank great. you. Thank you. Can you tell us, okay, so when did you officially launch Shop Be Latina? I launched um, February 14, 2017. Um, and to be honest, I started off as like, okay, I want to blog and make money. And I very quickly learned, I don't want to blog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like selling. I like selling, whether it's, you know, a, pe a pen, uh, you know, a paper, whatever it is, I like selling. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to sell these messages. And these messages have a meaning and they it provided a voice for people. So why not continue in that direction? And so um, I just made it all about the stories and the clothes. I think that's awesome. Right? Thank you. We start off with this with an idea. Uh-huh. And, and it's then a different turn. <laughs> it's, a, it's important to to follow what the thing is, right? Because sometimes we start off with an idea and we just want to hammer away at that idea so hardcore. And yeah. even if it means that like it's not, it's not what we want to do, it's not what people want, right? And so it's really, I think you just gave us a really quick um, business lesson there. It's like it's important to follow what it is that you actually want to do and be flexible yeah. and um and what those things are. Right. Um, I think that's, to me, that's literally what you just said, right? It's like the flexibility and responding to what works for you and in turn, what works for your audience. Right. Absolutely. That's awesome. And so speaking of audience and, mm -hmm. you know, responding to them and all of those things, what has been the most memorable customer experience you've had as a business owner? Wow. Okay. Um, well, I will say this. So before pre-COVID, I used to vend a lot. Um, I made it my goal to vend at least once a month this past year. And um, prior to last year, I vended at um, Afro Latino Fest in Brooklyn. And that was like amazing day. Like as soon, like I didn't get time to finish setting up completely before people were like, at my table, wanting to buy, buy, buy. I literally stayed busy from the time they opened those doors to the time it was time to go and all of the vendors break down. So it was just amazing. And not only because um, I was able to sell a lot of inventory, but also the different stories I heard, hearing the music, all of these people that I um, have conversations with on Instagram or you know any other social media aspect or platform. I got to meet them and they got to meet me. And so I had a lot of Instagram followers who were at the event and they came up and they were so excited. They wanted to take pictures. They were telling me stories. They told me what the message Latino has Los Quinto meant to them. And, you know, they just wanted so badly to support whether they related to the message or if someone they knew related to the message. So to me, that was the most memorable experience. And I was just, I had literally took a moment, looked around, saw Latinos from the everywhere that looks different in every aspect and everyone just enjoying having a good time and that to me was like beautiful and I like it made me want to do this and like wish that they would do this often <laughs> that's awesome yeah so shout out to Afro Latino Festival they are a yes. dope, um, festival that happens annually yes um, I've gone I've loved it I just so definitely shout out to them and I, I love that that was you know, your most memorable experience to date so far. I think that's right. Yes, I was really excited because the previous year they had reached out to me, but I think I was like maybe less than two years in and I've never vended before. And I was just like, and they wanted me to, and then I didn't have the funds at the time. So I'm just like, I really want to do this, but I don't, one, I don't have the money and two, I've never vended like a big event like this. So I was scared. And so what I did was I went as an attendee Okay. And I saw, I got a feel for everything. I had conversations with different vendors and I was like, all right, next year I'm going to be ready. And I was ready. Okay. <laughs> yes. <Don't do> research. <laughs> <Nope>. Yes. <laughs> this is so awesome. And so do you have any words of advice, 
inspiration for um, any person who's thinking about starting a small business? Um, yeah, so if you're thinking about starting a small business, I would say jump into something that is a need-based business, okay? Um, people need clothes to wear, right? You, I mean, it's a need. However, it's not like, you know, if the, the uh, country goes into a recession, is it recession proof? Maybe, maybe not, <laughs> you know? You wanna go into a business that makes sense and that will have longevity. So I know a lot of people, they get inspired and they say, I make it look easy and stuff. It's not easy. And matter of fact, with me being a black um, woman who's running this business, it's, I feel, now this is just my opinion, I feel, um, it has been harder for me compared to the outside looking into other companies who started after me who are having way more success. And like I said, that's from the outside looking in. Who knows what they're doing in numbers and sales. But I feel like the lighter skin or white Latinas or uh, Black women go further. Um, but that's just my opinion. And so I want to say, you know, just... If whatever you do, stick to it and just keep pushing. Um, no matter how long it takes you, it's not where you start or how you start, it's how you finish. Okay, I love that. And where can people find you and or your business online? Yeah, so we're on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube. So um, under Shop Be Latina. And so it's S-H-O-P, like shop. And then Be Latina is B-L-A-T-I-N-A. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank um, you. I'm so excited about your store and I'm so happy and like cannot wait to continue to see your business grow and you to continue to have those successful moments. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me.